Then I'm high, no surprise, so far. Okay, now, I'm very happy to be here. It's my first time in Nigeria. It has been a number of times I've been in Africa. I've been to different countries in Africa, and so I, I encourage you to be prepared to be used by God. It's very important to understand that we need to be prepared to be used by God. And today I will talk about the motivation to love God and to serve God. The motivation. Why, how can we be motivated to love God and serve God? Now, there are many people who go to church and they just want a good time. Oh, they do, yeah, they just want a good time. They just want to enjoy. Now, that's good. It's good to enjoy God, enjoy church. It's very good. But it's very important that we know that we need to be pleasing to God. Because if God is happy with you, He will bless your whole life. Now there are Christians who come to church and always say, please pray for me for healing. Please drive out demons from me. I have many problems. I have many problems in my family. There are people who just seek help. Now it's good to seek help. But after you have help, then you want to bless other people because then God is happy with you. It's very important that we don't just receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And when we give, God knows it. God knows it. And God will give abundantly to you and bless your whole life. I have experienced many blessings from God. I have the motivation to serve God with all my heart. Um, now today I talk about motivation to love God and serve God. Let me tell you, let me ask you this question first. Guess how old I am? Guess. How old? How old I am? Let me tell you how old I am. I am 67. Now I can retire and stay home and relax and enjoy life every day at home. But why do I go to different countries? Why do I want to serve God? Because I know it's important to serve God and bless these people. So these people will be serving God and blessing other people and God will be happy with them and happy with me. And when God is happy with you, He'll give you everything. At 67, I have a lot of strength. I don't need to wear eyeglasses to read small letters. I don't, read, I don't need eyeglasses for anything. And God has blessed me in different ways. I use that example. One time I came to Africa and I, I was going to transfer from one plane to another, but there was an a, a interval of a few hours and I miscalculated the time. And by the time I realized it, the plane has left. And I went to the counter and I asked the person, uh, you know, I was supposed to be on that plane half an hour ago and then the plane has left. And then another person said, you have to rebook your ticket. And then I went to the rebooking counter, and then the person said, well, because you book it in Hong Kong, so you need to call Hong Kong to try to rebook your ticket. And when I called Hong Kong, the person said, it's too difficult, this is too hard. And then I prayed to God, Lord, help me. Make it possible, because with you, everything is possible. Yeah. So I went to the rebooking counter, and I talked to the person, and I said, please, call again and find out, can anything be done? And then she called, and then her eyes and mouth were wide open, and she said, the plane came back. The plane came back. And later I found out from the people in the plane, I said, what happened? They said, well, the plane just could not take off, and so it came back. So it just could not take off, and it just came back. So I had a chance to get on the plane again. What I want to say is, if you really love God and obey Him and serve Him, God will bless you in ways 
beyond your imagination. Because the Bible has said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human heart has not thought of all the blessings of God. What God is, will do for you, how He bless you for those who love Him. When you love Him, He will prepare for you wonderful blessings. I have many, many blessings, but today I'm not going to talk about that. Today I will talk about how and why you should love God more and obey God more. Why we should love God more and obey God more. So that your whole life will go higher and higher. Let me, let me say this. I came from a very poor family. I came from a poor family because my father gambled a lot. My father lost a lot of money. Sometimes he lost a whole salary. Sometimes he, he lost his whole salary and we didn't have money. And sometimes, you know, my, it was my stepmother who bought rice that has mold on it. That is not fresh, not clean. It has mold on it. It's dirty rice. And then she washed it and then we eat it. So when I grew up, a lot of time I ate very bad food. But when I believe in Jesus, and I really love God. When I realize there's a God, I really love Him and I want to serve Him. And I want to obey Him. And I start to tithe. I start to obey Him and tell people about Jesus. And God opened a way for me. You know, I did not have the money to do that. But He prepared a way for me, for me to go to university and go to have two degrees in a seminary. Now all this is prepared by God. And I want to say that if you want to love God and obey God, your whole life will go higher and higher and higher. Amen. You want your life to go higher? Yes. So I hope you really say, yes, I want to dedicate my life to God. You know, in a church, it's like a pyramid. Pyramid. In a bottle, most of the people in the bottle are people who just want help who are not steady in their faith, who always need help, who are always weak. At the bottom, most people are always weak and are not dedicated to God. And then higher up, a Christian who are more steady in the church. And then higher up, are people who want to serve God more, but still have problems in their life. And then go higher up, are people who dedicate to serve God and start to take care of their problems in their life. And the highest up are the people who want to serve God and dedicate their whole life to God and have strategy from God to do what is the best. To have the strategy from God to do what is the best to bless more people. But many people are not like that. Many people just say, I need help, I want help. I need this, I want, I want this. Just want care. But if you say, yes, I want to dedicate my life to God so I can bless more people, God knows your heart and God will bless you. And your whole life will go higher and higher. You will go beyond your present situation. <coughs> Don't think that you're limited by your situation. When God knows your heart, He will open the way for you. So let me ask you, do you really want to be used by God? Yes. Do you want to really put down your burdens and worries and always think about God and serve God and bless the people around you? Yes. Now, when you serve God, you don't just start with leading meetings. First, you want to take care of your life and relationship with God. And in these few days, I'm going to do training. But what I want to say is, when you come, please be prepared to learn and study and remember and take notes and write down what you've heard so you can use it. If you're not, you're not prepared for that, then, then you're not ready for this. This is a training for pastors and devoted Christians and leaders so that you can serve God better. So we prepare for learning. And now I'm going to give the motivation. I hope you remember this, okay? Now, you can think of a house, a house. The house has a top and has pillars on two sides. And what's on top is point number one. 
Point number one is this. I hope you remember this. Everything is in God's hand and no one can run away from Him. Can you say it with me? Everything is in God's hand and no one can run away from Him. Say it again. Everything is in God's hand and no one can run away from Him. Now many Christians think they can run away from God. They think they can have a fear. Now there are Christians who have a fear outside their marriage. There are Christians who have premarital sex. There are Christians who follow witchcraft. I heard that in this country there are Christians who follow witchcraft. Now all this God doesn't like. And they think they just want some money and they can escape the eyes of God. Let me ask you, can you escape? Run away from God's eyes? No. no. We cannot. I hope you always remember. Even now, you see a ceiling here, right? You see a ceiling. It's like no one sees you outside this house. But one day, we'll be standing in front of God. And at that time, every scene in your life will come back again. And you'll find there's no ceiling anymore. You'll come back to today. Everyone and God will be watching over you when you're listening to the sermon. Now some people say, yes, I want to learn. But some people say, uh, too much learning. I am not motivated. I don't want to learn. Uh, finish up fast, please. Now some people like that. And God knows it. And God will judge us according to what we do. That's what the Bible says. Everything we do, including at home, now some Christians, even pastors, at home they'll yell at the wife and the children. They'll say, I'm a boss in the church. At home I'm a boss too, everyone has to listen to me. Now that's not the right thing to do. Because sometimes people don't think of God watching them. We have to think of God watching them. But when we think of God watching them, we don't have to fear. But we say, when I love God, God is very happy. Can you say this? When I love God, God is very happy. When I bless people, God is very happy. Say it. When I bless people, God is very happy. So whatever we do for God, God is very happy. It's only people who sin and offend other people that they have to really have fear. And they say, oh God is watching me, I have fear. But if we love God, we don't have to have fear. But we honor God, we respect God. But we don't have to be afraid of God. In the Bible it says, fear God means respect God. Not to say, God, oh, I'm afraid of you. It's not that kind of fear. It's, God, I respect you. I honor you. I, I really obey you. Now, let me give you a couple Bible verses. First one is Psalm 24, 1. Psalm 24, 1. Now, you might not have time to turn to it. You can write it down for yourself. There it says that the Lord, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. So the world and everything in the world, everything in the world, including all the money, all the resources, all our houses, everything we have belongs to the Lord. So if God wants to give you something, He can give you something. Let me tell you, I came from a poor family. I, have, I would have no money to travel to different parts of the world. But God has provided for me. When I really, when I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998, when Carlos and Aconia from South America, Argentina, came to Hong Kong and they laid hands on me, I was a pastor already for 15 years, and he laid hands on me, and experienced a great love of God. And I cried for a long time and I said I could I didn't realize I could experience God like that. And I spent much more time <coughs> praying to God and experiencing him, him and love Him. And then God started to teach my life more, much more. At that time I was a pastor already for 15 years. But yet God showed me more teaching, how to take care of my life, how to have a close relationship with God, how to serve God. And so God raised me up higher and higher, but I need to obey. If I don't obey, that is no use. And then God prepared the way for me. For 10 years, I have to be trained by God. 
And then after the 10 years, God opens the way for me. And now he provided for me that I can go to different countries. And I even help different missionaries who are motivated to train other people. God has provided for us that we can help other people to bless, to train people. So I'm saying if you really love God, God will open the way for you. You don't have to fight for money by yourself. Some people use witchcraft. If you use that, God hates it. God hates witchcraft or any cunning method. But if you really want to follow God, He can provide for you so that you can go and bless different countries. So everything in the world belongs to who? God. And then when it belongs to God, who, what would this, all this money go to? To who? God. To God and to the ones God likes, right? Okay. To the ones God likes, the one who really love God, God will provide for you. But we don't serve for money. Let me tell you, God has provided for me. I don't take any salary now. I don't take any salary. Because I have the money I needed already. I don't need to have salary. And all the money we receive, we use it for mission work and helping people. So I don't want to be greedy and get more money. When I, the more I'm willing to give, the more God gives to me. Okay? In other words, I'm just going to read this. Revelation 2.23 2.23 The second part Then all the churches will know that I am He who searches hearts and minds and I will repay each of you according to your deeds I'll read it again Then the church will know that I am He who searches hearts and minds and I will repay each of you according to your deeds what it says here, God will stretch your heart and your mind and He will repay you according to what you do. Let me ask you, do you always love people and care about people? Do you sometimes yell at people? Do you sometimes take advantage of people? God sees all that. God sees everything we do. That's why I'm very careful with my life. If I do anything wrong, I have to apologize. And if there are ways that I can get some money in a dishonest way, I will not take it. I will not take it. Because if I do it, God doesn't like it. Let me use an example. In Hong Kong, if we go to have dinner, and we have, in some places, we have $200 for the meal, not, not U.S. dollars, Hong Kong dollars. And then we can get parking for, free parking for one hour. And then we have, if we pay $300, then we have free parking for two hours. But then sometimes uh, the waiter come and said, well, I'll just give you a $300 receipt. Now, we only pay 200 But when he heard that I have to park, he would say, I'll give you a $300 receipt so you can park for two hours free. But I said, I, won't, I don't want to take it. I don't want to take it. Why? Because if I take it, it doesn't belong to me. Then God doesn't like it. Let me ask you, are you greedy for money that don't belong to you? If you're greedy, if you want to take money that doesn't belong to you, it can damage your life. So whatever I do, I always don't take advantage of, advantage of people. Because I know God is watching us. Say it together with me. God is watching us. God searches our hearts and our minds. And He repays us according to our deeds. Let me ask you then. Do we need to repent of our sins at home? And with the cell phone? And with the opposite sex? You know, there are Christian guys, they say, well, a woman wants to have sex with me. Oh, well, I can take advantage of that and I can have sex and run away. Now, some people will do that. They say, well, I will not lose that opportunity. She just offer herself to me. But as a Christian, do we do that? No. 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 When we do that, God doesn't like us. It will destroy our life 
and our life will go lower and lower and lower. So the first point I give today, I have five points, okay? This first point is like the house, the top of the house. Everything is in God's hand and no one can run away from Him. And then on the right side, the pillar on the right side is when we love God and obey God, God will bless us. And when we serve God, God will reward us. And then on the left side, if we don't love God and don't obey God, there will be destruction. And then when we don't serve God, there will also be destruction. So these are the five points today. Now say this with me again. If we love God and obey God, God will bless us. If we love God and obey God, if we serve God, He will reward us. And then on the left hand side, if we don't love God and don't obey God, there will be destruction. And when we don't serve God, there will be destruction. So which side do you want to choose? So the right side to love God and obey Him and serve Him. But let me ask you, does everyone here all the time you really want to love God and serve God and bless the people around you? Does everyone do that? Yes. Well, I hope so. I asked the pastor what sermon you want me to preach. He said about motivation to love God and serve God. I guess maybe it's, if everyone is serving God, he would not ask me to preach that. There will be some who, when they go home, they say, I'm too tired, uh, I cannot do anything, and then they forget about everything about glorifying God and blessing people. But every Christian can bless the people around you. That's serving God. Serving God is not just in the church. When you love your family members, when you care about them, when you pray for them, when you bless your neighbors, that is serving God. Serving God is not just in the church, it's in everywhere, wherever you go, you can serve God. Okay? So I'm going to go into each one of these points, and I hope you will listen and remember, and you can write down these Bible verses. Okay? So the next point is, if we love God and obey God, God will bless us. Okay? The Bible verse, very simple, everyone would know it, Matthew 6.33. You know this one? Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now, many times Christians read this, but they don't pay attention to it. Now, seek the kingdom of God. When we seek the kingdom of God, what does that mean? There are two meanings. One meaning is, I want more people to enter the kingdom of God to be saved. So we'll pray that more people will be saved, and I ask God for wisdom to bring the gospel to them. I will ask God how I can bring my neighbors to church. And also, when there are newcomers to the church, I will greet them and welcome them and help them. Let me ask you, how many people here know everyone in the church? Can you raise your hand? If you know every single person here, can you raise your hand? You know, I, do you understand my question? Yes. How many of you know by name each person here in this church? Can you raise your hand? Just a few, huh? That means you haven't welcomed them. You haven't got to know them, right? So, we talk about evangelism, so evangelism to the outside, but first thing we want to do evangelism in the church. Sometimes they are non-Christian coming to the church. We want to welcome them, talk to them, listen to them, help them spiritually, and pray for them. So that's the first step we can do. There are many Christians come to church, just listen, and finish, they go away. So the first thing we can practice love here, right? We can love each other here and help each person in the spiritual life. That way, God is happy with you. Now, that's what I did when I became a Christian. God just moved me to do that. I, talk to the Christians in the church and ask them, do you really believe God is real? Do you really have salvation? Some of them said, no. I was surprised. In the church, there were people who came to the church before I came. When I came to the church, I was very excited God is real. And I've been very excited about Jesus, salvation. And I asked these people, some people, they said, no, I don't know. I don't really know God is real. 
I don't really know how to have a good relationship with him. So I talked with them to help them. I found that there are Christian, there are people in the church who are not born again. So I try to help them. So that is seeking the kingdom of God. You want more people saved. <laughs> and the second meaning, okay, say it with me. The first meaning of seeking the kingdom of God is want more people saved. Okay, say it, say it. I want more people saved. I want more people saved. And the second meaning is. I want my heart to be the king of God. What does that mean? If I obey God, God is the king in my heart. Say this with me. If I obey God, God is the king in my heart. And then if I obey God at home, my home is the, is the king of God. Say it. If I obey God in my home, then my home is the kingdom of God. Wherever people obey God, there is the kingdom of God. Say it. Wherever people obey God, there is the kingdom of God. Let me ask you, does every Christian obey God from the heart? No. 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 So God wants to be the king of the heart, but God cannot because he doesn't obey God. Because he wants pornography, because he seeks after sex, because he wants money. Now, even some leaders, if you notice some leaders just want money, don't follow those leaders. So some people, they don't really have God in the heart to be the king. Because we know that God searches our heart, so we cannot run away. So all day long, I hope you'll be like me. Let me tell you how I live my life. Every day I would say, God is here, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I love you, Lord, and God is very happy with me. Now every day we can pray like this. Now, let me explain again. First we can say the prayer of grace. Prayer of grace means the blessings of God. God is here. Say it with me. God is here. God is here. God is blessing me. God is blessing me. God is loving me. God is loving me. And then prayer of worship. I love God. I worship God. I worship God. I hold on to God. I hold on to God. And then the third will be, God, then God will respond. That is a responsive prayer. He will respond. When I love God, God will be very happy. Say it. When I love God, God is very happy. When I pray to God, God will listen. When I pray to God, God will listen. When I follow God, God will bless my whole life. When I follow God, God will bless my whole life. Now, if you pray like this every day, I love God, and God is very happy, and God will bless me then you have strength. But many people pray like this, Oh God, where are you? You're far away, please help me, I need help. Because they think that God is very far away. But when we pray, we know God is here. I want God to be the king in my heart. And then, when I let God be the king, He will be in my heart, and He will bless me, and He's very happy with me. That way we have strength. Every day I would say, God is blessing me, hallelujah. God is opening the way for me to serve God, hallelujah. So I have faith when I follow God, I seek first the kingdom of God, and let God be my king, and then all these things will be added to me, and God will listen to my prayer. So when we really seek God, God will bless us and help us, and to be with us all the time. So when you pray, you can say, God, when I pray to God, God is very happy. Say, when, when I, I pray, pray to God, God, God is very happy. happy. This is responsive prayer. I pray to God, God will respond. I love God, God loves me. Say, I love God and God blesses me. It's better to say, I love God and God blesses me. I love God and God blesses me. And God will strengthen me. God will strengthen me. Okay, let me read to you in... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. There it says that I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of men the things God has prepared for those who love him. So eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the mind has not thought of the things God has prepared for those who love him. So when we love God, God will prepare for you things you can never imagine. Let me tell you, I could never imagine 
today that I can go to so many countries and bless people and train people to respect God and honor God and love God. And many people's life are changed. And today your life can be changed. Amen. If you believe that, whatever I do for God, God is very happy. God will reward me. When I love Him, then He will reward me and bless me and He will open ways for me beyond your imagination. Let me tell you honestly, very often we worry. Now I worry too. I worry too, but very quickly I take care of it. Sometimes I worry, oh, will the people listen to God? Will the people change? Will the people really follow God? But then God tells me, I just do my part. God is responsible for the rest. Say it with me. When I do my job, God is responsible for the result. If I just love God, have a close relationship with Him, with him and obey Him, and serve Him according to His way, He will take care of the result. So you can relax. I know that God is happy with me. Then I can relax. And I can rejoice. Hallelujah! <laughs> that way you can serve God with joy. Maybe sometimes, you know, in the past I have served God with burdens. Oh, the people are not changing. It's too hard. But now I say, I've done my part. God is very happy. And when I relax, people change more. So I know that when I love Him, God always responds and bless me more. I don't look for the blessings. Actually, I want to be able to bless more and more people. Okay? Now, the next point. When we serve God, God will always reward us. Say it with me. When we serve God, God will always reward us. He will reward me. Okay? Now, many people say, well, I, I cannot do much. I cannot do much to serve God. Let me give you one verse. Sometimes people say, I, I don't serve God well enough. Will God be happy with me? Now this verse, Mark chapter 9, 41. Mark chapter 9, 41. Chapter 9, 41. Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of hot water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. Now read it again. Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose the reward. Now some people say, I don't know how to serve God. I don't know if God is happy with me. But here it says that. If you give a cup of cold water to someone belong because it belongs to the Lord, or because you want to bring the person to become a Christian, then you will not lose the reward when you have a pure heart to serve God. Now, but some people serve God with a motivation to get money, to get reputation, that people watch them. Now, let me say this, I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. Now, some people like to sing in front of people. Now, it's good. It's good if you have a pure heart. If you have a pure heart, you say, ah, I want to glorify God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You want to glorify God. It is good. But if you have a heart to say, listen to my voice, I sing very well. Oh, I sing very well. Listen to me. Now, if they have this heart, is God happy? No. No. So whenever you do anything in public, ask yourself, do I do it to glorify God or do I do it to draw attention? If we do it to draw attention, is God happy? No. no. And then if you give a cup of cold water because we love God and love the person, we will not lose the reward, even a little thing. Can you do this? Can you give a cup of cold water? Yes. Can you greet someone in the church? Can you greet someone in the church? Yes. Can you get to know everyone in the church? Yes. Now that is serving God too. Can you be nice to them, kind to them? And all this, God is happy with you. And whenever you greet someone and welcome them and help them and say, how's your family? And then you get to know their family and then you pray for them. And then you find out, oh, their family needs help. And then you help them. And God is very happy with you. So get to know the people around you and help them. And get to know your neighbors and help them. 
then God will bless you. So is it hard to serve God? Is it hard to serve God? No, because Jesus said even a cup of cold water. So Jesus did not say you have to bring someone to Christ. Of course you want to bring someone to Christ. But he said even when you just give a cup of cold water, God will reward you. So now many times we want to try to bring people to Christ and they don't, they refuse to believe in Jesus. Does that happen to you? Has this happened to you? You try to bring someone to Jesus and they refuse to believe? And then you might get discouraged. But let me tell you, even when you try, God is happy and will reward you. Say it with me. Even when you try to bring someone to Jesus, and they refuse to believe, God will still reward you. Because you try already. But of course we want to try to bring that person to Christ. We don't just want to preach. We want to bring that person to Christ. But if the person doesn't believe, God will still reward us. So what I'm saying is, whatever you will do with a pure heart, God is happy. Say it with me. Whatever we do with a pure heart to love God and love people, we will not lose the reward. Hallelujah. Is that hard? Is that difficult? Is it difficult? No. No. We can all do it. It depends on your heart. It depends on your heart. Do you have a pure heart to love God? Do you have a pure heart to always say, God, I love you. I worship you. I want to obey you. I want to honor you. I want to bless people. Do you have this pure heart? Yes. I you. Want to have this pure heart. You just want to love God. Because God is so good. I just want to love God and serve God. How many of you want you? Can you raise your hand? That you have a pure heart. I just want to serve God. I just want to honor God. I want to be pleasing to God. How many of you? Now, I hope you really put it in action. Do you put it in action every day? Yes. Whenever I come across someone, I will think, what can I do to bless the person? And I hope you always want to do that. And forget about your trouble. When you bless people, God will take care of your troubles. But many Christians are buried in their troubles. They say, oh, I, I have depression. I'm unhappy. I cannot sleep. People don't treat me well. My family, I have a lot of problems. Many people are like that. It's true. They have problems. But the more we look at the problem, the worse it is. Now, we want to take care of the problems. But it might not change. Your family members do not change right away. But we can change and say, I will forget about what they say to hurt me. Mm -hmm. I will put down. I will trust in God. And then whenever I can do something to bless the person or other people, God is happy with me. That way you have a positive heart. So just now I talk about when we love God and obey God, God is very happy. And then when we serve God, He will reward us. I'll give you another Bible verse about serving God. In Matthew 25, Matthew 25 is about the end of the world, about judgment. There are three parables. In the second parable, it's about three servants. Uh, one with five talents, the master gave him, and the other one have two talents, and the third one have one talent, and then the one who have five talents earned five more talents. And then the master said what? What did he say? You are good and faithful servant. Come into enjoy the happiness of your master. So when we can use what we have for God, our time, our talents, our ability, our money, and God is very happy and he will reward you. And God can see. But then the one who is lazy, who buried the one talent, and he could not do anything, what happened to him? He's thrown out to the darkness and he'll be gnashing his teeth. Oh, I have been to church, but I did not serve God. So I want to encourage you, when you serve God, God is happy to bless you. And then in the third parable, it's about the sheep and the goats. Do you remember that parable? Yes. And then the sheep are the ones who have done good things to the little ones. And Jesus said, you have done to me when you do to a little one. And then there are the goats that have not done to the little ones. And then Jesus said, you have not done to them and you have not done to me. And then he said to the one 
who have done these good things to the little ones, where will they go? They go into eternal life. But then those who don't bless other people, they go into eternal damnation. They go into eternal fire prepared for Satan and his angels. I mean, not angels, but the demons. To so Satan and his demons. So we know that when we serve God, God will always remember and reward us. Say it with me. When we serve God, God always remembers and reward us. Now, what I mean is when we serve God with a pure heart. If people serve God with an impure heart, what will happen is like this. This is the foundation of Jesus. We, what, and we all build on this foundation. Every day when we serve God, we are building on this foundation. But at the same time, if we just want money, or want attention, or when we do it with pride, or when we do it, we serve God for, for our own motives, then we'll be tearing down what we have built. How many of you have built a house? How many of you have built a house? Can you raise your hand? Anyone of you have you built houses? Anyone here? Bricks? Build up bricks, have you? Anyone? No? If you have, can you raise your hand? Okay. Now, when you build a house, do you build one day and then tear it down the next day? No. But I tell you, if people serve God with a wrong motive, then they are building and they are tearing it down. When they build a house and have pride, they are tearing it down. And they build a house just for money, they are tearing it down. So when we serve God, we want to serve God with a pure heart. And it's not hard. I want to say it is not difficult. When we have a wrong motive, we ask God to forgive us. Please forgive me because I have some pride. Please forgive me. Help me to really love people and honor people and bless them. Then God will bless you and help you. And wherever we have weakness, we ask God to help us. Okay? Now we go to the left side of the house. The left side of the house is when people disobey God or don't have and don't love God, and there will be destruction. Okay? And then I will read to you this Bible verse. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will bring destruction. Read it. Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will bring destruction. So if we sow to please the flesh, now some Christians, they, you know, they, what they do, they want, uh, they have anger, they have frustration, they have lust, and they don't take care of that. And they, and in the church, they are very joyful, but at home, they are angry. Then they are sowing according to the flesh. And when they sow according to the flesh, what happens is they reap destruction. Let me ask you, how many of you are always nice and kind wherever you go? At home, when you talk to your husband or wife, your children, you're always nice and helping them and blessing them. How, how many are like that? Can you raise your hand? If you are always nice to people, always kind to people, can you raise your hand? So how about the rest? So if we're not doing well, ask God to forgive us. Because if we have anger, frustration, lust, and controlling behavior, we will reap what? Destruction. Now, how does destruction come? First, it will come to destroy the family. Have you seen Christians who fight in the family? Have you seen Christians who fight in the family? Yes. Now, in a church thing, they behave very well, but at home, they get angry. Now, in these few days, I will also talk about family and marriage, how to build up good marriage and family. And, but many Christians say, my wife is not nice to me, so I yell at her. My husband is not nice to me, so I yell at him. And it becomes a vicious cycle to destroy the family. But if we are willing to forgive and forget about the past and be nice, and then the family can be built up. That is reaping according, sowing according to the Holy Spirit. But we sow according to the flesh. What will they reap? Destruction. Destruction. It will destruct. There will be destruction in the family. There will be destruction in the church. 
in the spiritual life and in the home life. I have seen Christians who have divorced. I've seen Christians, the ministry all break down. I've seen Christians who have no friends because they always talk about problems. They have no friends, no one likes to listen to them. Then they are sowing disruption to the whole life. Have you seen Christians like that? Their family life, their spiritual life, their personal life, their inner feeling, it's all a mess. Have you seen Christians like that? Are we like that sometimes? Hopefully. And we can correct it. In these few days, I'll talk about how to correct it. How to take care of any kinds of bad behavior. Because all this bad behavior will bring what? Destruction. So realize that whenever we get angry, we can have destruction. Now, in these few days, I'll talk about how to handle anger. Okay, another verse, very important, John 5.14. John 5.14. There was a man who was sick for 38 years. And he was next to a pool, waiting for the time to get in a pool to get healed. But he could not. And then Jesus came and healed him. And then Jesus said this to him in John 5.14. He said, See, you're well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Now say this with me. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Say it. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So Jesus said to him, After you're healed, stop sinning. If not, you can get worse. Physically, you can get worse. You can be attacked by demons. You can have problems in your family. Your whole life can be torn down. So whenever we sin, our whole life can have destruction. The worst thing can happen. Have you seen that happen to people? When they sin, the worst thing happen to them? Now some people, you drive on demons, they come back the next day, the next month, the next year, they still have demons. Have you seen that happen? Yes. yes. Because they don't take care of the life. Demons come back. So it's very important not just to drive on demons, but to take care of the whole life we follow God totally. Take care of our sins and anger and frustration and negative thinking, all this, so our whole life is clean and pleasing to God and God will bless us. Yes. And in these few days I will talk about that, how to handle our life. The main thing is, don't eat garbage from people. If people yell at you, don't take it. When people yell at us from the sinful nature, do we have to take it? But people take it very seriously. And they think about it over and over and over and again. What happens is, they will get more and more angry. But if people said things that hurt us, we'll say that words have no authority in the heart. Don't say it to them in the heart. I don't have to worry about what they say. I don't have to take it seriously. I just trust in God. I just take the blessings from God. God blesses me, and I take blessings from good people. Good Christians and good people. You know, people bless us all the time, we take those blessings. But we don't take the negative words, then we won't get angry. It's very simple, but many people are not willing to do it. Okay, now let me give you um, another verse. John 15, verse 6. Jesus said, if you do not remain in me, you do not stay in me. You are like a branch that is thrown away and withers such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burn. So Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. The branches who remain in me, if you have a good relationship with me, you bear fruit and I'll be with you and you bear fruit. But the branches who are not in Jesus, they will wither and will be thrown into the fire. And as Christians, we want to pray all day long. <laughs> What's the benefit of praying all day long? When you pray all day long, you'll be joyful the whole day. And you think about God all the time. And you'll be strengthened by God all the time. You know, wherever I go, I always say, Lord Jesus, in my heart. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> always do this. And I keep the joy of the Lord. After I experience the Holy Spirit, when Carlos and Claudia pray for me, I experience power whenever I pray. And later, I experience the joy. So whenever I think of Jesus, the joy will just flow up. 
And I want to keep the joy. I don't want to have burdens and worries and sadness or anger. And I handle all these feelings, and I find that I have more and more joy. I don't know it. Any time of prayer, even in the middle of the night, I have the joy of the Lord. And also, God speaks to me all the time. He gives me teachings and ideas all the time. And today, I give you a very simple teaching. In a very simple way, you can remember. And it came from God. In a very simple way that you can understand it. So if we don't live in God, there will be destruction. It will be thrown into fire. Now Jesus has said, there are people, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Are you familiar with that verse? Yes. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. On that day, many will say, I preach in your name. I have cast out demons, I perform miracles. But Jesus said, truly I say to you, I don't know you. Because they don't obey the Lord. They don't follow, the, obey the commandment of the Lord. But when we, only he who obeys the commandment of the Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. And then we don't just obey in some area. We obey the whole life then you have no openings in your life for Satan to attack you. If you have openings, if you have anger at home, it will be an opening, and Satan can attack you, okay? And the last part here is about people who don't serve God will face destruction. Now, let me say this. We are not saved by doing good. We are saved by grace through faith. Say it with me. We are saved by grace through faith. When we repent of our sin and trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are forgiven and saved. We are not saved by doing good. But when we are saved, then we do good. Because God is prepared for us to love Him, to obey Him, and to serve God. Just now we said, those who serve God, God will say you're a good and faithful servant. And come in and enjoy the happiness that the Father has prepared for you. But then for those who buried the talents, in Matthew 25, he buried the talents, he'll be thrown into where? The outer darkness, where he'll be gnashing his teeth. So some people Christians say, I've been to church all my lifetime. But God said, you never serve me. You never bless the people. You don't care about the people. You just want to be helped. You never bless people. Yes. And then Jesus said, you have buried your talents. You have to go out into the outer darkness. Are there people who go to church and they never serve God? Are there Christians, so-called Christians, go to church and never serve God? There are. So I hope you're not one of them. That you really seek opportunity. If Jesus said, if you give a cup of cold water, you would come a cold water to a little one, you will not lose the reward. Are you willing to do more? That's why I want to come here. That's why I want to bless more countries. Because I know everything I do can bless you and the people around you. And also I can raise some people to serve God here. And God is happy with that.